We continue now at the top of Daf Tes Zayin Amr Aleph in Masachas Brachas. This is Brachas Daf 16a. The Gemara left off with a statement by Rabbi Chama Rabbi Chanina asking why the following two words are next to each other. And the Gemara picks up right here the word Ohalim Lenecholim. This is in Parsha's Bullock. Why are the word Ohalim, like Ohel, as intense, next to streams or, 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 or tributaries, rivers? Why are those two words next to each other? Dechsev, like the Pasuk says, Kinecholim Nitayu Kiganos Alei Nahar Ka'aholim Nata. This is talking about the Klal Yisrael, they're like these strong streams and uh, like uh, a holim that are planted by God. Just like uh, rivers and streams can make a person go from being tome to being tahor. So to a holim, tense, can bring a person from a kaf chova, from being liable, to a kaf schus, to being, mer- to being able to be, uh, to be meritorious. Rashi here explains what does this mean, Ahalim? What is it referring to? Bate Midrashos. This is a reference to Bate Midrashos. Now, uh, Tosis here, interestingly, we should just point out quickly, uh, he quotes Rashi, which says the Pasuk that we're dealing with is Kinecholim Nitayu Ka'aholim Nata Hashem. He says that word Ahalim actually is a Lashon of Lashon Besamim, and he rather says that we're talking about the Pasuk of Matovo Ohalecha. Uh, that pasuk is also n- near Nechalim Nitayu. Now, uh, despite Tosas pointing that out, our Gemara seems to have the text explicitly of Dechsev Kinechalim Nitayu Kaganos Alei Nahar. Uh, neither Rashi or Tosas seem to have that text. Both of them quote the pasuk Rashi here also says Kinechalim Nitayu. And if Rashi had that pasuk in the Gemara, it is unlikely that he would have quoted it. So there may be a slightly different girsa here of the Gemara according to both Rashi and Tosas. Now we continue at the two dots. Hakore Lemafreya Lo Yatsa. If a person reads out of order backwards, he is not Yotze. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi have a kakatrin leg in Nonal, Rabbi Allah. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, they were tying a chuppah together, building a chuppah on behalf of Rabbi Allah uh, for his, for his uh, wedding. Amar Lahu, he said to them, Adhachi Vahachi, while you're uh, busy, busy with this, Azil Veshma Milsa de Bay Midrasha, let me go. I'll go and listen to something in the base Madrash, Veasi Veemalhu, and I'm, then I'm gonna come back and I'll tell you what the Khidish is. Azal Ashkehe Latana de Katani Kame de Rab Yochanan. He went and he found a Tana that was teaching in front of Rab Yochanan. The following halacha: Kara v'ta'a ve'ino yodea lahechan ta'a. If a person is reading the uh, Kriya Shema and he makes a mistake and he doesn't know where the mistake was, he doesn't really know exactly where he should go back to. But emtza haperek yachzer l'rosh. Uh, if he's in the middle of a parak, he should go back to the beginning of that parak. Bain parak le parak yachz or le parak rishon. If he's between prakim, but he doesn't know which prakim he is between, he should go back to the very first parak. Bain ksiva le ksiva. Let's say he says the word uchsavtam, but he doesn't know if he's saying the uchsavtam from the first parak or the uchsavtam from the second parak. Yachz or le ksiva rishon. He should go to the uchsavtam from the first parak. Omer le Reb Yochanan. Reb Yochanan said to him. To this Tana who was teaching this halacha, lo shanu ela shelo pasach belaman yirbu yemechem. All of this is only true if you haven't started the uh, paragraph that says laman yirbu yemechem, which of course is at the end of the second parak. Avol pasach belaman yirbu yemechem. But if you already started that that uh, that uh, pasuk, sirchei nakat viyasi, we assume that he just automatically knew he was up to the end of the second parak, and he does not have to go all the way back to the first parak. It's it's an assumption that subconsciously he knew where he was. Asa v'amar lehu, he came and he said this over to them, to Rab Ami and Ravasi, who were building his chuppah. Amrulei, they said to him, Ilu lo banu el Had we come only to hear this uh, piece of halacha, that would have been enough. Now the Mishnah. Ha'umnim korin barosha ilan uvarosha nadvach. Let's say you have workers. They're in the middle of doing their work. They are allowed to read the Kriya Shema uh, while they're on top of a tree or while they're on top of a platform. Rashi says over here that a nadvach is a platform, a binyan of stones, a platform of stones. Nadvach binyan shalavonim. So they're allowed to read their Masha'in on Rashain Lasos Kain Betfila. This is not true when it comes to Tfila, when it comes to Shmona Esrei. And Rashi on here says, What is unique about Tfila? Ditslusa Rachmehi Uvoi Kavona. So uh, davening Shmona Esra, you're asking for mercy, it requires kavana, and so they cannot have proper kavana when they are Barosha Ilan or Barosha Nadvach. Chasan Pater Mikriya Shema Lailo Harishona Viad Motsoi Shabbos. A chasan is Pater from Kriya Shema, the first night, the night of the wedding, until Motsoi Shabbos. Imlo Asa Maisa, if he has not yet done the Maisa with his Kala. 
Umaisa Rebbe Gamliel Shenasa Isha. There was a story with Rebbe Gamliel that he married a woman Vakara Laila Harishona, and he read Kriya Shema on the first night. Amru Lo Talmidav. So his Talmidim said to him, Lima Detanu Rabbeinu Shachasan Potter Mi Kriya Shema. Didn't our Rebbe teach us that a Chasan is Potter from Kriya Shema? Amar Lahem. He said back to them, Eni Shomei Alechem. I will not listen to you. Levatel Heimeni Malchus Shemayim Afilu Shachas to nullify from from me. Uh, the acceptance of Malchus Shemaim, even for one moment, I am going to do the mitzvah in any case. The Gemara now begins with a brisa. Tanu Rabbanon, we learned in a brisa. Ha'umnin korin barosha ilon uverosh hanadvach. The workers can read on the top of a tree or on the top of a platform. Umispalalin barosh hazayis. They can even daven shmona esrei on the top of an olive tree. Uverosh hataena on the top of a fig tree. Usha'ar kol ho'ilonos. But other trees, yardim lemata umispalalin, they should go down and uh, and daven and pray, the idea being that certain trees, it is easier to concentrate when you are in them than others. They are, they are safer to be on top of. And Balabayis, in any case, he's not experienced being on the, in these areas. He has to go down uh, from these trees, from these platforms, and daven. Lafisha ain't daito miyoshevas. All of this is because he cannot settle his mind properly in these situations. Rami le Rev Mori Brodabas Shmuel Lurava. So Rev Mori, the son of the daughter of Shmuel, set the following contradiction. Before we see the contradiction, it's Kedai, it's worthwhile to see Rashi here why he calls him the son of the daughter of Shmuel. Barad Abbas Shmuel Rashi says, Bekama Mekomos Karile Bar Rochel. There are many places where we call Rev Mori the son of Rochel. Ubas Shmuel Haisa, she was the daughter of Shmuel. Vinishbis Levain Ha'amim, she was captured amongst the nations of the world. Kid Amr Bechsubis, as it says in Ksubis. Uba Aleo Echad Vinis Abrahimeno, and one of these non Jews who had captured her, uh, he got her pregnant. Viachakach Niskayer, and afterwards he was actually Megayer, he converted. Ushme Isser, and his name was Isser. Kid Amrina Baba Basra, like it says in Baba Basra, Rev Mori Bure Horaso Shalom Bekdusha Hav. It says that Rev Mori, the son of Isser, uh, she got pregnant not bikedusha, meaning not in holiness, not when the father had yet converted. Lakach lo nikra al shem aviv. It was for this reason that Rav Mori is not called the son of Isser. He's sometimes referred to as Isser Giora, Isser the, the the Ger in the Gemara. No, he's instead referred to the as being the son of Rachel or the son of the daughter of Shmuel. So Rav Mori, the son of the daughter of Shmuel, set the following contradiction to Rava. Tanan, it says in our Mishnah, the umnen, the workers read at the top of a tree or at the top of a platform. This seems to tell us that one does not need kavana for Kriya Shema. Urimini, and the contradiction is, it says that if somebody is reading Shema, he needs to have kavana. Shema, like it says, Shema Yisrael. It says in the Pasuk, Shema Yisrael. And in another part of the Torah, it says, Haskes U Shema Yisrael, which basically means, you know, be silent and listen. And pay attention, have kavana. So malahalan bahaskes, afkan bahaskes. The implication is that when we use the word shema, we're saying to kind of be silent and pay attention. And you should also pay attention when you are saying shema. You have to have kavana. So we have basically a contradiction here in terms of whether or not one needs to have kavana during shema. Uh, Ishtik, he was quiet. Amar le, midi shmi alach ba. He said, have you heard anything on this issue? Amar le, he said, hachi amar of sheshes. This is what of sheshes said. V'hu shebetelen mi malach don v'korin. They do have to be mevatel from malacha. They have to stop working. They shouldn't read while they are working. So yes, indeed, even according to our Mishnah, they have to have kavana. Gemara says, v'hatanya, but we learned in a bray. So beis hilal omrim oskin be malach don v'korin. On the contrary, beis hilal say they're allowed to continue working and read. Uh, read the Kriya Shema. The Gemara says, Lokash, it's not difficult. Habe Perak Rishon, Habe Perak Sheni. There's a difference between the first Perak of Kriya Shema and the second Perak of Kriya Shema. We made a similar distinction earlier in the Masechta. In the first Perak of Kriya Shema, one needs to have Kavana. In the second Perak, one does not need to have Kavana. Now the Gemara continues with another Brisa. Tanur Abanan, we learned in a Brisa, Hapoelim Shayu Osin, Malacha Etzel Balabais. If the workers were doing work by the Bal Habayis, Korin Kriya Shema, they should read Kriya Shema, Umevarchin Lefana Ule Achra, they should make the brachos before and after, the Ochlin Piton, they can eat their bread, Umevarchin Lefana Ule Achra, and they can make brachos before and after eating the bread. And they can daven shmon esrei. However, they should not be the chazan for the davening. They also should not do nesias kapayim if they are uh, if they are kohanim. They shouldn't uh, dochen. 
So the Gemara says a uh, contradiction to this brisa of Atanya Me'enyurches. There's a brisa which says they don't say the full Shmona Esrei, they say the abbreviated 18 brachos of Shmona Esrei. Amar Rav Sheshis, Rav Sheshis says, Lo kasha, it's not a kasha. Harav and Gamliel, Harav Yoshua. One b'risa follows the opinion of Rav and Gamliel, and one follows the opinion of Rav Yoshua. But the Gemara says, one second, I Rav Yoshua, my area poil, and I feel a kol adam nami. Rav Yoshua said, any person, even if you're not a worker, is allowed to say the abbreviated Shmona Esrei. Rashi over here says, this was a... Uh, this was already a machlokis uh, later on. Harav and Gamliel, Harav Yoshua, the Tanan, Beperk Tfilas Hashach, Harav and Gamliel, Omer, Bechol Yom V'Yom, Mispal Adam Yudches Brachos. Harav and Gamliel says every day a person says all 18 Brachos. Harav Yoshua, Omer, Me'ein Yudches. A person only says the abbreviated version. So this would not apply only to Poalim if it was Rabbi Yoshua. It would apply to everybody. One other thing I should just point out quickly, Rashi here, what is this abbreviated Shmon Esrei? He says it's Havineinu Ladas Derachecha Shekola Yud Alef Brachos Bevracha Achas. So one says the first three and last three brachas uh, in the regular fashion, the middle 11 brachas are condensed into one bracha, which we, which, which we call Havinenu. So the Gemara, anyway, the Gemara says uh, we have no answer yet to the contradiction. Does a person say the full Shmon Asri or the abbreviated Shmon Asri? You can't answer Rabbi Yoshua because he says all people say abbreviated. Ella Idi Vidi Rabbi Gamliel. Rather, both prices are Rabbi Gamliel. Velo Kash, it's not difficult. Kan Baosan Beschorin, Kan Baosan Besudasan. In one case, they're working for wages. In one case, they are only working for meals. Uh, Rashi says wages means they're working for wages and meals. Uh, and so, therefore, since they're getting paid a little bit more, they have to hurry up and, and uh, say the abbreviated Shmon Asri. But if they're only working for meals, they should say the full Shmon Esrei. V'hatanya, and we learned in a b'risa, this, this b'risa is not a question, this is a support for what we just said, making a distinction between people working for wages and working for meals. Ha'poalim, shahayu osim, melacha eitzel balabayis, koren kriya shema umisbalin, v'ochlin piton, ve'ein mevarchin lefanea, avol mevarchin l'achareha ashtayim. So here it says that the workers that are working should read kriya shema, they should daven, they eat bread, they don't make a bracha before the bread, they do make a bracha after. Ketzad, now how do they make a bracha after, they only make two of the brachas. How do they do that? Bracha Rishona Ketikuna. The first bracha they say regular. Shniya Poseach Bevir Chasa Aretz V'kololin Bona Yerushalayim Bevir Chasa Aretz. The second bracha is a kind of a abridged version of the second and third combined. You put together the Bir Chasa Aretz and Bona Yerushalayim goes within the Bir Chasa Aretz. Bamed Devarim Amurim Be'osin Bishar. And all of this is true when they are working for wages. Aval Osin Besudasim. But if they are working for for meals, Oshay Balabayis Meisiv Imoin, or he is eating with them. Mevarchin Ketikuna. Then, since they are getting paid a little bit less, they can make the uh, they can make the regular benching brachos. Now the Gemara continues analyzing the Mishnah, which discussed a chasan pater mi kriyashma. Chasan is exempt from kriyashma. Toner Abana. We learned in a brisa. When you're sitting in your house, prat laosek be mitzvah. This excludes when somebody is in the middle of a mitzvah, he does not have to read kriyas shema. Ovelech tochav aderech, and when a person is on the is on the road, prat lachas, and this excludes a chasan that does not have to read kriyas shema. Mikan amru from here they said hakonis etzav besula pater v'yaso almon achayev. One who marries a besula, someone who's getting married for the first time, is exempt from kriyas shema. But one who's marrying a widow, someone who's already been married, he is still chayev in kriyas shema. So my mashma, the Gemara now asks, what exactly is the implication of these pesukim? How do they tell you anything about the fact that you, when you're doing a mitzvah, you don't need to say kriyashma? Amar of Papa, of Papa says ki derech. The uh, pesukim over here, v'lechtachav ba derech on the road. It's comparing you to when you are on the road. Ma derech rishos af hachanami rishos. Just like the derech that a person is going on, he's going for his own purposes. It's voluntary. He's not going for a mitzvah purpose. So too, in all cases, when you're uh, reciting Kriya Shema, it is only when you're doing something that is not mitzvah related, but if you are osek b'mitzvah, then you are potter min mitzvah, you're potter from Kriya Shema. The Gemara says, Milo askina in the cause of Ledvar Mitzvah. One second. Who says a road is talking about going on a trip for your own purposes? Maybe you're going for a mitzvah. Maybe the derech you're on is on the road to do a mitzvah. And the Pasuk, on the contrary, the Pasuk says, even though you're going to do a mitzvah, you still need to say Kriya Shema. Gemara says, no, Imkain Lema Kra Beleches. If that was the case, the Pasuk could have said Beleches, which is when walking, not when you are walking. My what does it mean when you are walking? This teaches us that in your walking, when you're going for your purposes, you're chayv in kriya shema ha mitzvah petiras. But when you're walking for the purposes of a mitzvah, you are a And The Gemara will con- continue this, this discussion on the next daf, on daf tesa zayin amid beis.